Aloha Hawaii. Welcome to the podcast. This is Lucy's Paradise Podcast. I have a very exciting guest actually today. I have my brother and a lot of you might actually know him by the online name Fake Best Friend. So the first thing I wanted to ask you actually <laughs> is obviously we know each other because we're related and we grew up together. I know you. What? But, but I wanted to kind of get first into that name because i was thinking about this earlier when i was walking outside i was like wait i should ask you where you came up with fake best friend because i think that's a good start where i came up with it mm -hmm. i came up with it during my time on myspace so back back in the uh ancient times of social media <laughs> and i think so on myspace and on facebook when you have you don't have followers you have friends mm -hmm. and i had so many at the time i think i got to almost like a million at one point on myspace that like it didn't make any sense to like call somebody a friend when you have that many friends mm -hmm. attached to your okay, account right. and i just thought right. it would be funny and so i thought okay well you know they're I'm I'm your fake best friend because it's not real until we make it real. So in the meantime, I like I'm that. not your real best friend. I'm your fake best friend. And I just kind of stuck. And then it evolved. So as I got older, that's why now online I go by, like my, my professional like creative moniker is Ben Friend. So I kind mm, of... I like that. It matured. You kind of evolved it. So I even see. though my, my... I didn't my, even catch that. So yeah. So even though my actual okay. name, my username on most platforms if not all except for tiktok tiktok is the only one where i don't use fake best friend but um yeah that's that's why i use that name it just it developed and grew into something different and i wanted to i wanted to do something that was a little more mature as i got older i like that I so tell me more about I know we're kind of like going into this real quick, but um, I know what, what, what's the next question. Jeez. But the reason I want to go into this is because I think this really helps people one. understand like who you are now, because when people I have friends that like I tell them, you know, about my brother and then they, they, you know, follow you on Instagram. They don't understand the history behind like why your Instagram is where it is now. Mm. in terms of no, most most people don't most especially people don't. nowadays where Unless everyone they, is an influencer so right. it's like and i also don't have so many followers anymore like i had way more followers on myspace um back in the day but it's mostly because i ha i don't purposely try to grow that if that right. makes any sense yeah, like yeah i think that stopped for me in my when i was like 20 21 i was like i don't really care yeah well how old were you when that happened and all the myspace stuff in high school like 16 yeah i wrote my first yeah mm -hmm. yeah so that's, that's i crazy. think i had youtube it's uh, you can see your date i mean i was a creator a youtube creator when they first like invented youtube creators right. i was like one of the first people that got invited to join did i utilize it no <laughs> No, I didn't. Well, it's different than it is was back then, too. It, like, they changed it, and then they actually re revoked my creator status because I hadn't used YouTube to create content. Oh. And so there were all these new regulations or rules that they had where, like, you had to have so many videos or so many plays or so many views or something. And I just was like, okay, we'll take it away because I don't, I don't use YouTube anyway. So. Okay. But, yeah, I think 15. I was 15 years old when I first started, like, dabbling with the interwebs. The interwebs. <laughs> okay, so tell me more about obviously we're related, so I grew up with you. But tell me more about that. How was how was it growing up with me? How was growing up here in Hawaii? With you it was very unfortunate. <laughs> um I am still <laughs> trying to I set myself re up for that recover one. Yeah, from mentally and emotionally. Just from like you know when you just see something so ugly all the time every day wow. and then it just affects your mental state i'm kidding um this no, is his humor you guys no i humor. growing up with you is really fun you I, I would say you're probably were my first best friend if, if i really think about it yeah i told sonia that too. yeah i think you were my first experience as a best friend and i think since then i've held such a high standard for anybody that I did become friends with because I mean, you, which is unfair, really. I, I realize it now that it's unfair to, to right. place that responsibility on someone because no one's going to be your, si your your little sister. Yeah, you your know sibling. what I mean? Right. But I think it set me up for 
a lot of good expectations for people and for closeness and for relatability and support and comfort. So it was good. We had a lot of fun. We, you know, we used to get into trouble. Yeah, but, but we used to do really interesting things together, which was always it's like you were always my sidekick, my partner. Yeah, yeah. My partner. You were crime. like Batman. And I was like Robin for sure. Yeah, I think. I don't know. Although I did like. Yeah. Uh huh. I always That's liked analogy. Robin's costume better, <laughs> but I did like Batman as a being better. So it's like if I could be Batman, but with like a cuter costume, <laughs> then yeah. Um, we related a lot to Mary Kate and Ashley, mm-hmm. and watching the, the Olsen twins on. Well, we used to watch their little. Their I don't movies. know if people remember this, but before they were designers for the Row, so now they're like high end, luxury, you know, fashion right. designers. Very well respected, very successful actually, um, and we want we would watch their two. I'm two. We're two peas in a pot. Yeah, they had all these different movies. All these like which I liked better than Full House. Personally, just because it was all about them, it was like them starring in the movie. I think my favorite thing know? about Full House was the fact that there, there were twins and siblings. Yeah on a show and I felt like we related to them oh, too totally. even though we weren't twins people thought we were twins yeah so often yeah. so it's it was kind of like this fun little special yeah. white lie or just experience that everyone would think oh you you know are you guys twins we'd like look at each other they all yeah no. they think we're twins yeah. and they always think that I'm older <laughs> for some reason which I think is always odd well I mean just but. if you get a mirror and look into a mirror you'll know why no I'm kidding no <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was gonna get roasted on my own podcast. I'm morning. kidding. No, I think it's because I I'm so silly. I've always been like that, and so I think you were always a little more reserved with your emotions in general. Like you come across, and sometimes it's hard to read you. With me, yeah. I'm pretty much like, "Hey, I'm Ben." Like all the I'm time. Ben. Yeah, I think for I the think most part. I just so I think learned it's, that it's maybe better that comes that across. Way. Yeah, maybe that comes across younger is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I've found that it's it's almost better that way because I've I've been like that for a lot of my life where mm-hmm. like I wear my emotions on my sleeve and I kind of just am always me and I feel like I don't think everybody deserves the best versions of me all the time. So sometimes I'm just kind of like a little more even keel. You don't keel. deserve? What do they have a to little, do to earn that? Just a little more even keel until I like start to get to know people better because I feel like people misinterpret me a lot and mis you know and like misunderstand me a lot and then it makes me like super frustrated that i was so open like i was so open and then Mm. i felt judged or i felt ridiculed and i'm like dang really like i'm now now i feel like i gotta walk into the room and be like maybe i'll tone it down a little bit but it's like i also don't want to do that because i'm also me you know yeah you want to be you i'm a lot yourself it's okay yeah i get it i I think i got over that a long time ago got i got over caring yeah. what people think really like I yeah really it's not so it's not it, it comes down to i don't care anymore but i also will present myself a certain way yeah on purpose you got, it's like you got that experience and so you're like i'm gonna just this is how i'm gonna present yeah myself. like if i'm gonna go into like a house party with all my closest friends like yeah i mean obviously i'm gonna be as open as possible and not care mm-hmm. even more but then yeah I, uh, hopefully that makes sense but no it does i mean i i I like to say that I don't care anymore. I do care. Obviously, I'm a caring person, and I don't. You know what I mean? Like I don't. But well, I, I think do. My mouth gets a, me in trouble. Yeah, and I think things so. I have. I do us. have to watch that. Like sometimes I have me to hold too. my tongue. Is what it is. It's not so much that I can't be myself. It's just that I've learned the power of hearing something and not responding, or or hearing something you're not ready for. Right, but what I'm saying is, like, I found that it's not always so important for people to know what I'm thinking. Right. Like, I used to be, right. it used to be important for me to speak up, and then I realized, okay, I have slightly different views than a lot of yeah, people, yeah, and I'm yeah. very confident about those views, and that is a lot for some people to swallow and kind of be around. And I'm sensitive to that because I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable, and I don't want to create enemies, and I don't want tension with people. Like, I love, I'm very social when I want to be, right, you know? Right. So it's like, I've learned that there's a way there's I've also learned there's a way to deliver right information. There's a way to deliver my message or deliver what my thoughts are or my response or whatever it may be. Well, that's why I was excited for you to be on the podcast um 
because I know that we're both pretty articulate and when we talk about things. So really? I was excited. I, sometimes I feel really dumb, to be honest with you, but well, I appreciate that. I thought you just wanted me on the podcast. Well, you I'm smoke cute. weed and I don't. <laughs> just kidding. But Cannot confirm nor or deny. deny. <laughs> um, I, I meant... Uh, we do that still. We still finish each other's sentences like that. It's yeah, crazy. We always will. It's because we're twins. It's because we're connected like Mary Kate and Ashley. <laughs> but um, what is it? He's just a sister. I'm the cute I'm one. I'm the cute one. No, I'm just the cute one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are literally just the sister. So let's just make sure. <laughs> but no, um, we used to fight about the reason. Yeah, the reason, we, the reason we talk about a lot of these different topics is um, Ben is a fashion designer. He also is self-taught basically in music production, um, which are really difficult things to do. Are there? Am I? Are those? It's yeah, so weird. I it's, mean, it, it's weird to hear you like say that about me. Well, it, yeah, it's true. You probably are not never in the room when I'm talking about you. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. I'm so a fashion I guess now I will I will say it the way that I would say it to anybody. Okay. Um, when I talk about my brother, I say, you know, my brother has been a professional ballet dancer. You've danced at multiple different um, esteemed places, Cincinnati mm-hmm. Ballet, New York City Ballet, things like that, where that in itself is not just an accomplishment, but it's an art and it's very difficult art. You know, my brother's been dancing since he was two so that's incredible but alongside that you know he is self-taught in music production which i don't even know how to do that i sing and like you know play instruments and stuff but the music production side and producing is a whole nother thing mm-hmm. um, that i'm a I've control al- freak always so admired about you yeah, i learned I you know what yeah when you want to do something to be honest with you this is why i actually did not want i mean I did want to be be a professional ballet dancer, but when I had to stop because of an injury, I wouldn't say that I was heartbroken, maybe slightly, but I was kind of also relieved because I mm. didn't like being a tool for somebody else. I didn't like being a creative tool for somebody else. I wanted to be a creative tool for myself. And I think have not having that control as a dancer in a company who has to do A, B, and C, jump when I say, turn when I say, do it this way, not that way. I just was like, I don't, I didn't like They're like, like curating your body to do what they want. Right. And for me, dance yeah. was such a personal thing uh, that I was passionate about. It was just like, uh, I want to do it my way. So right, I was, right. I was sad when I had to stop dancing, but music kind of overlapped with that time in my life. So I was doing both. Yeah. Cause I was still, I was making, I started making music when I was still in ballet school and it was good that I had that interest because it kept me mm. flowing creatively when I couldn't dance. So when did you stop dancing? Officially when I was Yeah, like officially. Twenty one. Um Dang. Yeah, but I was professional at fifteen. So if you yeah. think about the fact that like how many people are professional ballet dancers for six years of their lives. You already had like some I already had experience. Yeah. I traveled all over the nation I didn't get to travel internationally as a dancer but I did travel all over the nation I had teachers from all over the world um so yeah and then you had music I had music it was there for me and again with the music I learned because I did try to research when I wanted to do my own music I said okay well I it started with the lyrics for me like the things that I wanted to say and this kind of goes back to learning how to I guess self-censor censor myself right because Mm -hmm. I realized that okay I think a little bit differently and I express myself a little bit differently than most people maybe there's another way that I could say the things that I want to say and music funny because I find your music actually like (laughs) you still say things in your music that a lot of people won't like you know like you won't won't say. say you know what I mean like you're the way that you rap um And if you haven't heard um, Ben's music, please check it out. But um, the way that you rap and stuff like that, it's it makes people think it's not just a beat and someone saying, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. Over and over again. Like, I hate I hate modern music. I hate modern EDM. Yeah, it is (laughs) cookie cutter music. It's like, here's a formula for A, B and C. It's like before AI was a thing with creativity, people were already using loops up the yin yang and it's annoying. Like I never, so, so when I, when I, 
Yeah. The reason why I had to learn how to produce myself is because I was out there trying to find resources for beats and music that I could use for the words that I wanted to say, right? Whether it was singing or rapping or whatever you want to call it, right? Yeah. Um, And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the things that I, I wanted to use. I couldn't find the sounds that I wanted. Nobody, I would hear like some rock song and I would hear a certain instrument. I'm like, I like that, but I want it to be at a faster BPM. And right, there's no one right. that's creating a loop with that sound in a faster BPM. So I just have to create it myself. What is that? I have never heard that before. Okay, continue. So, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I learned, I had to teach myself how to make it make music because i had to i there was nothing out there that i could use that i liked i had really high standards so but you don't play any instruments it's all electronic music yeah i don't even read that's, music i just i just hear it it's yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and to be i, I say like that crazy but i it's say like, that it's to so other funny because i play instruments and don't do music production and you do the opposite so it's like well it's funny. it's something I'm not saying that I condone not learning how to read music. I mean, if right, you're interested right, right. in music, you're musical, you have the talent, do the work. It's just that yeah. at the time that I was getting into music, my life was a ballet dancer. I was training to be a professional dancer. So music was like a part a of my life already, but it, but yeah. creating music was a was hobby. A hobby. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to use my computer. And because I was using my computer I and like I wasn't that better using... because there's less pressures. Well, I wasn't using a guitar. I wasn't using a, a keyboard to make music. I was using a computer keyboard mm-hmm. that when I would hit certain buttons on my screen in Logic, right? right? It plays... It would, a little note. keyboard would pop up on my screen and, it, you know, this letter would be this sound yeah and that letter would be that sound and i literally had to learn how to make music in a different way than somebody who just sits at a piano and it's like you yeah. know yeah so i had to really Essentially use it's the same thing yeah mm-hmm. it's just that if you were to hand me sheet music i'd be like yeah what or is hand this? you a guitar yeah, yeah like what is this supposed guitar, to be right yeah like that's interesting scrap paper that's interesting so what about your influences here living growing up here in hawaii in terms of fashion or music my influences here like what influenced me here or if yeah. if being from here influenced me yeah all, all the questions all you're like everything um because i know fashion wise i don't get get a lot of inspiration being here fashion wise because i do in surf i'm shorts so and- i know everyone's in surf shorts and they're barefoot and they're not they're unkempt <laughs> <laughs> not everybody. That's unfair to say. A lot of people. In general, it's a casual culture. And that's cool and all. Yeah. But that did inspire me in fashion not to look like that. So, I mean, I was, yeah, no, I just didn't want to, that wasn't my, I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't attracted to it naturally, even though I grew up here. Yeah. I was attracted to what I saw in magazines. So, I would escape into like fashion magazines or what have you that I'd see, you know, at the, at the, the grocery store or whatever when we'd go with our parents and i was like okay why don't people here look like this why don't people here dress like this why aren't they uh, wearing this like this is cool this is interesting this is yeah. different and it was just i was so I attracted that. to it that that also opened my mind to understand that there's a whole nother world outside of this island yeah. outside of this state and i yeah. think that was really a motivator too for me That's and insp- that was insp- it was so it was inspiring it's just that yeah. i'm not necessarily inspired by dressing down or yeah. i'm not really inspired by overly casual dress you know what i mean so what inspired this so i'm, I'm wearing one of one of ben's creative arts here what, oh what is it that dress, dress to, to kill. kill and where can people find this what's your website it's available on my website onlybenfriend.com but what inspired that? Yeah. Like the saying? Dressed to kill. Yeah. What does it make you think when you read dressed to kill? What does that mean to you? I mean, you know, being like in the military and stuff. I don't know. It has, for me, everything it has double meaning when it has the Oh, whoa. Kill. That's like dark. Dressed to kill. Because <laughs> literally, woo. But also, that's I mean, not what it know, means. When you walk into a room and you are the best dressed, you know? And you kill it. You're just killing it. Yeah. You're killing it. You're killing it, bro. You know, when you walk into a room and it's like, <laughs> the energy is just sucked out because your outfit is so good, dressed yeah. to kill. And it's, it is a tank top, it's so casual. it's a casual so it's, piece of it. clothing. Yeah. And that's what's supposed to be funny about it. It's like, it's like I'm dressed yeah. to kill in this tank top. 
No, I love it. It's a black tank top and I can rock this tank top. And it's about an attitude too. That's another thing I learned. Like as you mature, especially with like design work and stuff, it's like you can wear. What is it? Yeah. You can wear anything. It's how you wear it that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. hmm. That makes sense. Okay. What about this? What inspired your fitness slut? Fitness slut hat? (laughs) Yes. Again. Same thing with all my music. When somebody goes, what does this mean in your songs? What did you mean when you said this? Well, what did you feel? What did you think? So what does that well, mean? I wear this. I wear this when I go to the gym. Every single time I go to the gym, I wear my little fitness slut hat. And one time when I was in LA, I was in this mansion party and this guy comes up to me and goes, are you a fitness slut? And I was like, exactly. I, <laughs> yeah, I just think it's funny. You know? Yeah. And it's funny. I think it's funny. I think it's inappropriate. And I think that it's shocking somebody could easily say i'm a fitness addict but it's like okay that's okay cool so you're addicted no it's like there's another level so it's like how much do you love fitness yeah it's yeah, like yeah, i love yeah. fitness so much yeah i'm gonna fuck it up in the gym because i'm a <laughs> slut for this bar this barbell right now yeah 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 brb no brb <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. I think it's. I like. I like I, I, I do like shock value with language and with words. I think again, growing up here, that inspired that, just because of how words are or aren't used here mm. in communication, right? Mm-hmm. Or how language can be either a dividing thing between people here or it can be a welcoming and inviting thing so for example like code switching right so code switching my accent or my language to be a little more broken down english when i come home or pigeon english like on the plane comes naturally and i like that it's like i i will say moving away to california moving away to the continent or the states i learned really quickly that I needed to sound a certain way in order to survive because I remember gro- going to ballet school in San Francisco and these girls from New York uh, were in my class and we, you know, we do little activities in between classes and after school and stuff. And they could not get over the way that I pronounced this girl's name. I don't even remember what her name was. It was Alicia or something oh, with an of- A. It's the way I pronounced the A at the time. I don't oh. even know if I still pronounce it. I mean, I, you know, don't know what yeah. it was about the well, way I said it. When I moved to California, but... yeah, there, everyone said that I had a Hawaiian accent. And I didn't, I don't even really speak pigeon at all. It's very, very minimum. And that's only here. But I was told that. You oh, speak you have more an pigeon accent. than me, though, naturally. Oh, yeah, for, for yeah. sure. But you've also been here longer than me. And I've been here longer. Yeah. I've lived you in the Bay live Area. Here. So I, I did pick up a lot of Bay Area slang that I still use a lot. Uh, and I notice a lot of people here use a lot of Bay Area slang, which is interesting. But then I just kind of mix it all together. Hawaii right? is very influenced by California. Mm-hmm. Not just in culture with language, and, but trends and also music, especially especially Bay Area music, hip hop. Yeah. And R&B are always huge here. Right. Yeah. And I guess now EDM is huge everywhere. Everyone's a but, 49ers fan here. You know, right? Yeah. So it's like the tr- it's I mean, Because it's, think about it, the distance between Hawaii and it's just right there. It's like, yeah. it's the closest piece of... <laughs> piece of the rest of the planet you know what i mean (laughs) let me get over there let me learn what they're doing over there yeah i mean we don't even have like a pro football team here so naturally people are like we don't need one with all the fandom for these college yeah college (laughs) team we don't we don't but still i think that's why people are 49er fans because it's like right the closest thing Mm -hmm. but that's really i guess raiders because what is raiders vegas now raiders is yeah is it vegas it used to be the bay i think oakland raiders now it's oh yeah yeah yep it used to be that was the first football game i went to it was a oakland raiders game actually that was interesting mm-hmm. yeah it's scary over there but it was interesting they are like die hard fans raiders fans so i'm like when they said they were I switching like i was ev- like oh my god i feel like every sport yeah but fan is is like a major fan I, I feel like it's it's weird when a team like that anyway i don't know how we're even talking about sports when you're on the podcast. I don't even know. You don't even watch sports. <laughs> I don't even know what a football is. <laughs> I, I, I saw a so, basketball once and I sat on it because I thought it was a rolling chair. <laughs> oh my God, I can't with you. Okay. I'm not that so stupid. About, I know that so, you kicked the basketball in the goal. Social right? media more. I know I've been trying to get you on more. TikTok. Let's talk about social media more. Like Okay, like what? what do you want thoughts to on about? Instagram. Get specific with me. 
Well, why aren't you on TikTok? <laughs> I've told you a million oh, times. Oh, why I'm... I think it's a combination of factors. First off, I think it's the type of social network that it is. I'm a very aesthetic person. So, mm -hmm. for example, I don't know if you remember this. Maybe some people do who might watch this or listen to this, but Snapchat changed their, like, user experience, their UX, their app, the look of it, the way it functioned and everything at some point years ago after they were already successful and yeah. a lot of people stopped using Snapchat because it was like harder to use or it was confusing. I know Instagram has done Maybe. that a couple of times and people have complained, but it hasn't been as drastic as when Snapchat changed their user experience. And I didn't like they that. They changed it a lot. And so I stopped using it because it's, I'm not a slave to a social network. Yeah. If, if that makes any sense. So if something changes and I don't like it, I don't use it because it's there for me to use if I want. And if I don't want to use it, I'm just not going to use it. And so right. I think when TikTok got really popular, there were a lot of factors. First being that I didn't like the use. I don't like the UX of the app. I just don't like it. Um, I also know this for a fact that they manipulate their algorithm to make going viral a little bit easier, which I don't That's know true. how valuable that is anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. Like if anybody can just like make a video and get a million views and then buy a house, it's like, okay, well, it's not that special, you know? And I don't like the attention deficit. It's also weird. I don't like the attention deficit. <laughs> it's an attention deficit app. Like creator. It's yeah, like yeah, boom, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Like no one right. can sit there and watch something. The thing that I like about Instagram is the purpose of Instagram was micro blogging. So mm, the yeah, caption yeah, yeah. element was. Was you know what's interesting though, to me. Um, not to interrupt you, but you know what's interesting what? is I agree with that. But when I, I, I like to tell stories, so and they're short stories, they're under a minute long. But when I do tell short stories on my, on my TikTok, all the people that follow me actually watch all of those all the way through. Like they, they like my stories, which makes sense, which is why they follow me. But my point is like I've kind of made the people that follow me like whatever it is that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or if, if people like it's basically going to attract the right audience to you. Right. You know and the I'm thing is, but you also have to understand my audience is an audience of millennials. Like yeah, the majority of my true. audience is my age or yeah. slightly younger, like either older Gen Z's or, I mean, I guess I have a lot younger, a lot more younger fans that have been a, coming to my profile i mean i can see the data behind the scenes but in general tiktok was used by such young users and yeah, i have yeah, products yeah, to true. sell yeah that's i true. had a brand to sell and yeah. at the end of the day yeah i love social media but it does work for me and so it did not business from a business standpoint at the time yeah when it was, was it, getting was big it? It, to me it just didn't make sense because it's I, thought, I didn't understand tiktok for the longest time i never used it i didn't download it i didn't even go on it i was like anti tiktok yeah it's just one time. of those things where i just didn't get social it. social media for me is there for us to use yeah as we want and i don't right. feel like i need tiktok i i don't nobody needs any social network right so and with that I, said, let's go live on my TikTok. No, I'm just kidding. I just think, yeah, no, I mean, it just was one of those things where I think a combination of factors played into the fact that it just didn't quite work for me. I didn't like the app, didn't like the way it looked, didn't like the ADD, you know, attention deficit, it caused, no yeah, yeah, attention yeah. span. Like it's yeah. like two seconds, two seconds, one second, two seconds. I mean, they yeah. TikTok created a trend for music, going back to music, where yeah, that's popular funny. songs are sped up because they have to be. Yeah. So they'll do like a sped up version of a hit song because that needs to fit within a certain like amount of seconds on a clip. And yeah, I'm not good. That, no, I don't follow trends like that. I think it sounds stupid. I don't want to hear Lady Gaga in a chipmunk voice. I don't want to hear yeah, yeah, Adele like in a that. chipmunk voice. Yeah, like, I don't like that. Uh, it's just maybe some people are like attracted to that stuff. I just it didn't work for me. I don't. Yeah, I don't like that. So there was a yeah, combination of factors that I just said TikTok. Yeah. Instagram, yeah. I liked it just because of my audience. My audience was already on there. You have a lot of people that still follow you. They're like drilling something or something. I feel good. I feel like they're outside. I feel like is it outside or next door? I think it's in like one of the apartments. Mm. Oh. It sounds like it's coming from within. It sounds the yeah. It sounds loud. I think loud. he's trying to get in here. Is, uh, they're making an escape room or what are those rooms in that movie? In this, the panic oh, a room. panic room. Yo, I want uh, one of those. I just want to panic. 
<laughs> do you ever just want to? I am right now. Do you ever just want to? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I went off, I was panicking. You're like, I'm panicking right oh, now. Oh, I'm ready to ruin the podcast episode. Maybe yeah. it's just the caffeine you drank. Caffeine can cause anxiety and panic. Thanks, That's Dr. Dorado. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. It's just a fact. Thank you, Dr. Dorado, with your degree in fashion. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. It's kind of common. I mean, certain things you don't I need a degree stops. to know. You know, that's another thing that I hate about social media. It's like, are you a doctor? No, but I don't need to be a doctor <laughs> yeah, to yeah, tell yeah. you A, B, and C. I know, but you know I, I like mean? to make fun of you. Obviously, there, uh, there's actually there's. And I like to in. argue with you, so keep yeah. going because I won't stop <laughs> Love it. ever. Finally, someone's here to argue. Oh, do you think that if you live here in Hawaii for three years, you're a local? Oh, I saw that clip. No, I what don't. What do you think? Like I don't know. I so after I watched that? that. Speaking of Google, because I wanted to have sources, right? <laughs> I had heard from our own older sister Haven that when you live in a place for ten years, you are now a local of that specific place. You're not from there, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you could say, course. "Oh, you know, I'm a I, I'm now local, right?" Ten um, years, okay. I. Ten I tried to find I'm, data or other evidence or communications on Google to support that statement and i was like oh i there are some people that's that agreed with that mm. and then other people said there are other just factors went to reddit. uh Did it you wasn't see anything on reddit because sometimes reddit people just like discuss it wasn't things, reddit like, oh, it cool. was just google and the google search results which can't always be trusted but right. there were different factors that were interesting to me i think hawaii is a very unique place yeah. it's so special and so niche and so culturally Definitely. The culture here is, is is so it's just culturally very strong, stronger than a lot of other places that I've been. Oh, and yeah. and to say that someone is a local here after three years, I mean, I don't know. I'm I, just throwing a time out there. I don't you know. know. Yeah, I don't know if there's a specific time, but I would say you'd have to be in a place to think for of. a long period of time to be, cons- especially a place like this, because there are so many nuanced behaviors and habits and things that. I guess would I would consider making somebody a local, yeah. you know, like knowledge of things, knowledge of culture, ability to communicate. I would say mm-hmm. if you can't communicate, Being if you can't into the community, if you can't speak pigeon, it's really hard to say that you're even close to being. You gotta a be local. fluent in pigeon, Bruh. Get you gotta speak the talk. You gotta talk to speak. My leg scrap. <laughs> I don't want to. Whoa, that, that escalated real quick. <laughs> I was practicing for Wine For Wine Eye? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what they do there? They scrap. Well, Cody, I, I had Cody on my podcast and he was living in Nanakuli as like a. Left during COVID, um, came, came over here because he didn't want to get stuck in Florida. Didn't want to get. Oh my God, that's so loud. Didn't want to get stuck in Florida. Yeah. So he came to Hawaii and was doing like all his photography type stuff here and. Then ended up staying. That hasn't left since COVID, basically. So it was interesting because we, we got to talk about him living near Waianae and seeing all that. And I was like, oh, God. And how being was, so white. How was that? Yeah. How was I that? I mean, I would say that with his look, even though he is, he said he's like mostly white. He's, well, he's, he's yeah, he's like Ukrainian. And, but he's, and, he has and, dark hair and stuff. So like with a tan. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah. You could be mixed here. But it's I think tricky. that's that's what happens here, too. Like if you are super tan you're kind of accepted more. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, it's messed up to say, but it's kind of true. I feel like if you're Asian here more or Asian mixed in general, obviously like if you're Hawaiian or from one of the other like Pacific islands, yeah, like you're going to be more, you're going to fit in more. But definitely if you're part Asian here, it's just kind of an easier time to integrate, I think, in general. How was it moving to Los Angeles? Like the culture shock there compared to Hawaii, do you think? The differences in people and things like that. Because, I mean, I have stories, but I'm curious what your stories are. My story, the biggest, let me think. I think the one thing that really stood out when I first moved to L.A. and started working in L.A., Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, like, you know, quintessential Los Angeles, Los Angeles Hollywood, yeah. right? right? Is I would always... It would be mid-conversation, mid-sentence, you know, I'd be in the middle of talking to a person or working on something for them, and they'd stop randomly and just be like, where are you from? And I'd say Hawaii, and like, ah, oh, 
as if like whatever it connected like, it's like whatever like, they like knew maybe you weren't from there they knew i wasn't from la which is actually a compliment i yeah, was like yeah. okay cool i'm glad you don't think that i'm a piece of shit you know what i mean but um yeah i don't know what it was Later maybe it was just they were wrong my That's energy just... maybe it's just the way i speak maybe my an accent thing i don't know i didn't stop and say well why did you ask that you know right um i, I just I did get that a lot that's something I noticed so I knew that there was just something about me that definitely stood out in terms of like where I was from maybe that maybe it was my energy maybe it was my accent I don't know like I said but uh that was something that really stood out to me is that oh I have there's something about me that people notice and they like here and it's because it's so different I believe personally that it was just my energy and my kindness to people I was gonna say do you think it's the aloha spirit you took with you. I think it's the aloha spirit that I put in a tiny bottle <laughs> and I tuck it right inside my underwear before I flew over here. That's what, <laughs> that's what <laughs> Oh my god. I sound okay, crazy. you guys have to know that like this is normal for me and my brother to go back and forth and make accents. It's we've done this like our whole lives. Uh, not so much I, I guess characters. Accents, characters. But we're, we're voices. you're around so many here. There's like so yeah. many cultures. We do Filipinos, it all the time. You're the only yeah, person I Chinese, do that with. There's Chinese, there's Japanese. So it's refreshing that you're back. Andina, because nobody Andina. else makes voices. Well, I guess there's a couple of people, but you know. But they're no like they're wandering the beach and they should get some help. Type it's not of the thing. right kind of voices. It's not the right kind. There's multiple that they hear. They don't even speak them. They just hear them and they're talking. They just you can see them reacting, right? That's <laughs> mental illness. <laughs> That's okay. mental illness. I just want to let you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, go. Thank you. <laughs> <We'll> have, <laughs> Which is we'll not get, what's we'll happening get, over here, by we'll the way. We'll get more diagnosis <laughs> from Doctor Dorado. Um, real soon. Okay, when someone's walking around a beach well, <laughs> in a schizophrenic break talking to themselves, is that not mental illness? Or are they just having a really good time? <laughs> Depends on in the perspective. The what if they're not showered? <laughs> Maybe they took some really good mushrooms <laughs> and are really feeling the energy. And they don't have hygiene standards. <laughs> That's fair. You know <laughs> I'm what? Kidding, I'm kidding. I'm just laughing because it's so funny. No, but you're right. We should think very open-mindedly about that. <laughs> and I shouldn't judge. I mean... Next time I see somebody crawling on the floor on the train, I'm going to say, you know what? Maybe just having a bad day. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. I'm just not politically correct. It's like if I see someone that looks crazy, is acting crazy, they must be crazy. It's kind of like a natural human understanding that like yeah. something is wrong over there. Don't go there. Yeah, you don't need to be a doctor to know if someone's crazy. If they're <laughs> That's punching, for sure. They're boxing the air. That's, That's for what sure. happens. Yeah. Happens. They're boxing the air. I know you've seen that in LA plenty, especially in Hollywood. I've seen some crazy shit. I've seen some crazy shit too. The, uh, one thing that's different about LA is the the people that are homeless. Actually, you asked me what was what I what like. No, I want to know. Yeah, like said. how so? They're crazier. They? And again, I'm not a doctor, but I assume I the fentanyl in there. They're just tripping. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of the weather. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of the weather. Like, and this is going to get really dark for a second, but I'm also just a very real person. And yeah, I try yeah, to no, analyze situations and understand why this could happen in a place like L.A. Okay, option it's one dark. or, or dark. layer There's one a lot of evil is there. drug use. Maybe because we're so close to a border where maybe drugs can get in and out, allegedly, a lot easier. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's not alleged that there is a Mexican drug cartel. So, But yeah. I think maybe the closeness of that makes it easier to access therefore it makes it easier for people to kind of go woo and lose their mind another thing is i think the weather allows for more mentally ill people to stay homeless and survive mm. because if you were really crazy and mentally ill and not taking care of yourself but you're in a place like new york city or chicago where the weather right there's yeah. actual seasons like yeah, yeah. you unfortunately you're gonna be dead so mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to survive that long. And so I think I, there's more I think that's the, most, that the saddest thing about both places is the really bad drug issues. I mean, even here, you know, we have the meth epidemic that no one ever wants to talk about. But Which is it's so crazy to me. Apparent. How hard is it to find like all these labs? Like it's an island, girl. Well, that's... You can't import anything here. It's impossible, right? That's where corruption comes into play and... I, I feel like... You mean like the rail? <laughs> you mean like the, the really rail. efficient Hawaiian rail that was... Yeah, what, how much did it cost? Billions? This is why or I wanted you on. Because you are not afraid to talk about stuff like that. I mean, it's kind of... Fun. Like, who's not going to talk funny. about it? The freaking train doesn't even run. It's not even I'm running. I'm surprised it even was built. There shouldn't guys. be... When we drove this morning and there was... Tra okay, so we drove this morning to go to Koalina. Yeah. 
and there was so much traffic going into town and i'm like why is there traffic when there's a brand new train like shouldn't that kind of help wouldn't that help no yeah, i yeah. guess not i don't know yeah they need to figure this shit out well, and they, they're not trying to figure it out that's the thing yeah they're it, not it's 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 like this why? it's like an illusion right oh we're gonna make this round we're gonna do this and then they get the money and they get the money and then they get the money it's but think about this is. so like it's, they also have the not, zip lane where the lane corruption. opens and it allows more flow but then you look at the zip lane and it's still empty so it's like it's not logical my logic would be open the lane and just let everybody it's, it's in logical that lane. if you accept that what's the common theme is it's a corrupt way to get money then it becomes very logical because if they really wanted to solve problems no they'd be fine. solved they would be solved or they would have better solutions so now obviously you cannot build a rail underground because mm -hmm. we're on an island and there's only so much land and ground right yeah. so clearly the only other option would be to build on above ground which makes sense now, when you're going to do something that costs millions, millions, I think it actually costs like a billion dollars to create. The rails, those, yeah. yeah, those plans need to be structured and planned out in such a way that there are very little margin of error, basically. Mm -hmm. Because then what happens is what has happened. And I don't think the things that have happened, the errors that have happened with building the rail are on accident. I think they're on purpose because that's a way to, for Hawaii to get more money. And this is just a theory. You don't, no one has to agree with me, but I think to get more money, they create the problems on purpose. And I think it, a little bit of it has a combination of not being smart enough to solve the problem in the first place. I, I think it's a little bit of both. I think so too. Cause I, I think so. I think there's some, I think there's a little there's bit of a, There's a lot of interesting things happening in the state. Cause look, if I just cover my eyes, oh yeah, let me just approve this plan. Boop. Oh no, it didn't work. God, I need more money now to fix the plan. I just approved it. Like, what? Mm -hmm. oh, we Don't close your eyes. Like, oh. like, let's find a real... Oh. Hello there. Let's find a real solution, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's... Are you actually finding a solution for something or are you making us think there are? Because how do they get that money? Taxpayer money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got to convince the people that I thought there was a pot at the end of the rainbow. Obviously, people know what that there's mean? a need for it. Right. So they're going to vote for certain people. Oh, yeah. Oh, they want to do this. And I, uh, that, that's a good idea. People aren't smart enough here to know when they're being when the. the hey, 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 hey. The don't wolves, say that. There's some smart people here. There are a lot of smart people. And trust mm -hmm. me, there's a lot of smart people, people that I know, friends that I know that are doing as good as they can. But hey, apparently it's built now. And apparently they've done test runs and. So I don't know what's going on. Maybe one I want to write it. What's going on? Bro, one day it's going to work. $25 cool. a ride. <laughs> 2500 one way. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm curious to see now if once it does work, what's going to come how of did it. We, I love how we're like debating the rail right now. We're like, so this is, to be honest with you. You brought it up. <laughs> I know. And we, you just kept going with I it. Yeah, I was like, well, if we're I got to be up. careful what I throw you because I throw you a, a piece of something and you just like, chew okay so with in la let's just veer off of hawaii politics Whew, okay good because i was let's take a breather sweat a little. I let's, was like, let's do something a little I was like, there's some mokes and titas out there that are gonna fucking come they're gonna me, fight me it's it's okay they can come on here and fight me with words <laughs> um but my question for you celebrities in los angeles that you've worked with obviously I'm, i mean i'm sure there's i'm some not gonna name all of them of course not i'm not a and, name dropper but there's right a lot. <laughs> but my question is like how how has that been and just changing it up the topic for how like, has that been working with celebrities yeah, working with celebrities i've only been uh, I'll, okay i'll mention one celebrity i was only starstruck once and i didn't actually work with this person i met them and interacted with them because i was working in customer service and had to help them uh retail i was working in retail people I'm wondering who you're gonna name one of our idols no one of my idols nicole richie and she's the only person that I've oh met that I got star. I guess the starstruck definition that happened to me. You met her? Yeah. I would have freaked out too. I, I was just so shocked. She walked into the shop where I was working and 
I just literally, I felt like a deer in headlights. I was like, it is fucking Nicole Richie, and she is so tiny, and she is so cute, and she is so funny, and she is so gorgeous. And then she was asking me something, and I was still going on about how <laughs> she was amazing in my head. And then I was like, what do I say to her? And then I was just like, you look good. <laughs> I was what like, did she ask you? you look good. You look really good. And she's like, oh, thank you. I think she was asking, oh, I think there was something on display or something, and she walked in and asked about it. It was very brief, like, and then she walked it. out. Yeah, but that like affected me for like a week. Oh my god! But I've met other people, and died. it hasn't even mattered. Should I? I should say this name. Oh, I don't want to be shady. No, uh, you don't have to be shady. But Nicole Richie, I, I, mean, I have I do, a lot of respect don't. for my celebrity friends, and I only talk about them not on the internet, but except for like Leon, because Leon loves that shit, mm. loves attention. But um, Nicole Richie, I would have died if I met her. Yeah, like that's there were some I would have died people that I met that I thought I'd be so starstruck by and I really was not. Like Tyra Banks. I was not. Oh, really? I was not. I, If anything, I was like inconvenienced. <laughs> Where did you see her? God, that's shady. I was trying not to, I was trying to sound nicer, but yeah, I was inconvenienced. Why? And then it was just the situation at the time. Okay. Um, she was a not, nice person. It had not nothing coming. to do with her. It was just the situation that we met in that I was just like not convenient. And... Uh, well, that happens. I, th- and I, I think because of the inconvenience, I was then not able to absorb the fact that like, oh, it's so cool oh to God. see her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, I, people forget that they're normal people too. They're the normal, you know, they're going and getting their I wouldn't coffee. say they're normal people. They, uh, I would what, say, what I mean by that, they're not normal people, right. But what I mean by that yeah. is they are they do things flesh, that everybody does. blood, bone, yeah. like we are. Mm-hmm. We're all, you know. That's that's what I mean. I'm so, not phased by celebrity any, anymore. After living in LA, yeah. to me, it's like, oh, great. So you have a really great team and you have a great brand. Yeah. Like, does not make you a good person. Right. Does not make you a smart person. Does not make you an all-knowing person. Right. Does not make you an ethical person. Does not make you a kind person. It just makes you a person that a lot of people know. That's it. It's a person that a lot of people know. Yeah. Fake best friend. <laughs> no, I mean, the thing is, is like, what's a star? Like, you can be a star, like, and people just don't know about you. So celebrity is when people know about you. Mm. You know? That's what I think. I think well, there are like certain that. people that have an energy about them. I've met some of the most talented, creative people, and they're, like, total hermits. They don't like yeah. the scene, don't like, you know... That's how it was when I met Mike. That one dude, that one producer guy. Remember I sent you a picture? Oh yeah. He was like, I he never was nice. go But out. it's also, I'm also naive. You kind of remind me of you actually. It's, it's also think. like a naivete because I think that you didn't, we don't notice people. I don't realize, and I, so this is what it is. I, a lot of the times I don't realize who people are because I'm not very, I, I wouldn't say I'm well versed in a lot I, of different celebrity. Yeah. I end up, making friends with people and then telling you about it and then you're like oh my god do you know who that is and i'm like no not really mm-hmm. yeah because i think but i had to tell like, you oh. who he was yeah. yeah i was like okay so this guy does a b and c so that's a great thing that you guys clicked because you know yeah but i like that better anyway because I, I, i'd rather just because th- to me that feels more organic anyway and then it's like i'll google you later like i'd rather not google you now you know what i mean or like i mean I, do you people do that do people like meet someone and go hey how are you <laughs> Well, the other, when I was on <laughs> Hawaii, actually, I had to Google who this Vanderpump girl was because I swear to God she was there. But I was like, am I tripping? I like how you still call it the Vanderpump girl. So clearly she's not Her name is enough. Kristen, but whatever. I don't know her personally. What's so. her last name? Dodie. Oh, I don't so know. Is she on the show? Is that why? Yeah, she's on the show. Mm. But like, I don't think she's like a main character anymore. But anyway, I, I saw her, but I was with my girlfriend, obviously, and we're like having our own time there. And I was like... And she doesn't know anything, so she doesn't know what it, Vanderpump even is, you know? So for me to be like, oh my God, that's a girl from Vanderpump, she's like, what? Mm. <laughs> but I didn't, I was just like, there's no point in telling her because she's not going to know. So I was like, well, I think that's her. And then I just texted my niece, and um, Kawi, and I was like, hey, I think that girl's here. And now Kawi knows what it is because we watch Vanderpump all the time together. Got it. Yeah. So I like later, you know, I wasn't going to Google it right there because I was at the bar. She was across the bar from me, but I later Googled it and I was like, Okay, that was definitely her. But obviously, I'm not going to go bug her when she's like with her friends and all that. But I was like, am I crazy? Or I mean, what really would her? you say to it? Like, the thing. Nothing. Uh, I wouldn't say anything unless it was relevant. Like, unless we were going into the jacuzzi as well yeah. or something. And then 
Maybe. I mean, it See, just depends on the, TV, it just though, depends on the reality situation. Reality TV is so trashy. So it's like, yeah, how do you relate to like all they do is fight and argue on reality TV and if they aren't having an argument or a drama then there is no show did you notice that like it's not just a show about hey we have a really functional yeah, friendship yeah but when is somebody not having we have a really a functional friendship and we live in Los Angeles and we just so happen to work at a glamorous restaurant everyone gets along no one does drugs and we don't abuse each other <laughs> yeah. yeah that wouldn't sell isn't that sad it's sad like why can't we have a, a sh- why can't we have a reality TV show about people because that then it would be shits? called Full House man <laughs> House. And it's not reality. No, I think what they try no. to sell as reality is also just like tampered with. I, I would, yeah, that's like extreme. That's at the extreme. Mm-hmm. That's definitely at the extreme. Well, I think you need to come on the podcast again because I feel like we only like scratched the surface of things we can discuss. And I only went on one little Hawaii political rant. Mm-hmm. Were there any <laughs> last questions? Oh my gosh, I have so many But yes, questions. I would definitely want to come back for sure. I have so many questions. You have so when are you going to come back? Many questions. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> that's a really good question, girl. Summer, winter, next winter. Let me summer. check my sundial and let you know. Check your sundial. Pencil me into your... Depends. If it rains again, I have to look at the way the rainbow is going to be shaped in the sky. Well, summer's the best. Summer's the best. Summer's hot. Like, you, you'll physically. Be okay. It was freezing in LA when I was there, by the way. That was like unnatural. I've, ne- I've never been that it's cold. Been co- it was colder this it was season. It freezing. Yeah, it's been colder this season it wasn't for cute. sure. I was so ready to come back here because the sun. Because mm-hmm. the sun's hot. Yeah, here. and LA is usually hot and it was it was a disaster. Not. It was not. It was made not me hot. sad, maybe depressed. Yeah. Although, but you had fun there. You were depressed, or it just wasn't what you were expecting. Yeah, the no, weather, I get it. The weather, the weather, the uh, weather. I definitely had fun there. The weather can alter my mood. Here, I, I, I think I'm affected a little bit more. What is that? Seasonal depression? Is that what they call it? That's why I live in Hawaii. <laughs> mm, there's no season. I can't, I, so. can't get, I can't get that. Can't get affected. There's only one mood, baby. Happy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Take your happy pills, guys. No. Anyway, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for we need to being born after me. Yes. <laughs> I don't have a choice of that. But um, by the way, Ben used to steal my bottles when we were kids. So that's why I'm malnourished now. <laughs> that's why you're malnourished <laughs> now. Kidding. That's why she has a brain deficiency. Yeah. I'm probably going to cut like 90% of this podcast. I hope you do. I, mean, just, just I hope you it. really cut. I don't, we won't even. Air I this think one. the best thing to do with this podcast is probably just Trash to. It. Hopefully, the hard drive. Just crashes. throw it away. Yeah. I know. I really hope the hard drive crashes. No, no actually, no, no, I don't. No, 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 That's. I don't wish that. Take it back, Pele. Take it back. <laughs> oh Does she do that? She, I don't know. <laughs> she does now. Oh my god. Well, thank you guys so much for listening in. My brother will come back again. Um, follow all of his social media. He at can, fake best friend at fake everywhere. Best friend, baby. And I'm so sorry that you had to listen to this conversation. And we're so sorry he's not on TikTok. So sorry. The one professional dancer that should be on TikTok. But anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in to Lucy's Paradise Podcast, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>